In this video, I'm going to show you how I use this Notion workspace in order to keep track of all of my AI art, all of the props that come with that art, and also how I manage over 600 different design components within this workspace. I have researched the most important categories when it comes to making good AI art, and I've put 50 plus components within each category. And what I've also done with this workspace is added a consistent character hub where I can go in and follow a step-by-step -step design system in order to start generating consistent characters with Midjourney. Now, when it comes to actually generating good AI art, the combination of these two databases has helped me tenfold. Now I'm going to jump into my workspace and show you around. If at any point in this video, you like what you're seeing with the AI Art Studio, then you can learn more about purchasing this template using the link in the description or the link in the top pinned comment. There are over 500 users of this AI Art Studio template and they are loving it so far. Now let's jump into the workspace. So this is the new AI Art Studio within Notion. On the left here, you can navigate around your workspace with these five buttons. You can add to your homepage gallery filled with all of your images that you generated with Midjourney. You can also add new components to the ever-growing components database over here. You can open your components database as I just showed you. You can open a full page view of your art gallery to see all of the prompts you used in order to generate your favorite images on Midjourney, and you can scroll through there and view that. And there's also this new option to open up the characters hub, and we will get into this a little bit later, but this helps you walk through a step-by-step -step design system that I've created in order to create better consistent characters in Midjourney. And within this design system, in order to create consistent characters, I give you paid tools and free tools that you can use in order to better create your AI art and consistent characters within Midjourney. I can go back to home, and on the right here, I have some of my favorite components that I like to use. As you can see, there's nothing in here right now since I've just migrated from 1.0 to 2.0. I haven't favorited any of my components yet. Beneath the navigation, I have a beautiful homepage art gallery. And once again, I can click into these images and I can see what prompt that I used in order to generate the image below. Then we can take a look at one of my favorite sections, which is the engineered AI art prompts. There are 11 of these and I've revamped them from the previous version of the AI art studio. So you can select these drop down arrows and this one gives you a nice cinematic still. So there's a film style where you can reference a cinematic film. You can upload your own subject or choose a subject from the components database that I've provided. And then you can view the example prompt in photo. So how did I use this prompt in order to generate this image? Well, I have that for all 11 of these engineered AI art prompts. So this has been the homepage of my AI art studio in Notion. Now let's go take a look at the components database where all of the magic happens. So originally I had 500 Midjourney components within this database, but I've added an extra 125 components and a new section for cinematic films. So now when you open these up, these are all cinematic films that are well known that you can reference within your Midjourney art if you're trying to copy a similar style. And as you can see, I've added pictures for all of these. And I didn't just add pictures for all of the cinematic films, but let's say that you are struggling to find a subject to use for your art. Well, I've provided 50 new subjects, so there's now 100 subjects, and I've provided pictures for all of these. And I haven't just provided pictures for subjects, but for every single category. And the beautiful thing about all of these pictures is that unless it's an inspirational reference or a cinematic film, these pictures have all been generated with Midjourney, so you know what you are getting into when you are using that specific word or component in your prompts. Now I can favorite a couple of these. Let's say I like the first three. I can hit that little favorite button. And now when I go back to my home page, what you'll notice is that they are all listed within my favorite color palettes. So that is one cool way that I do organize all of my components is when I have a component that I really like, I can favorite it and then it appears nicely for me right here on my home page. Next, I wanna show you the consistent character hub that I will use for mid-journey consistent characters. So I have the AI art studio right here and then it's like I have another secret database within the art studio. When I select open characters hub, it brings me to this entirely new workspace that I can organize my projects in. I can organize all of my characters for those projects. And I have these nice different views to show what projects haven't been started, what projects are completed, and then all of my projects. Currently, I only have one project in here, so that's all I will see. But when I click into this project, there's a nice description. There's a list of all the characters you have that are within this project, the different character variations. So if I ever want to reuse one of my character expressions, 
I have a variation made for that. So I could select Drake worried expression. And then as you can see, I can upload this. And if I wanna download it to my computer, I can do so. Now I'm going to be using this character hub as a way to organize all of my projects and my assets that go within those projects. So this isn't necessarily a getting things done dashboard or a to-do list dashboard, but it's a way where you can see deadlines on your projects. You can organize all of your assets when dealing with consistent characters in mid journey. When you go down to the, your Characters section, as you can see, I have all characters. I only have one character created right now but we have a design sheet that we've uploaded so we can see what this character looks like in many different poses and expressions. And I show you how to create those design sheets within this dashboard. I give you different prompts you can use in order to do so. And I just give you a bunch of helpful tips along the way. And while I'm showing you how to create this stuff, I'm also showing you how to organize it within your Notion. So then I can go to all of my variations that I have for this character. As you can see, I only have three. But you can imagine once you start to get four or five characters in here with different projects and all sorts of different expressions and poses, this can become very useful because you have it all sorted right here. Then we can go to my favorite view in the Your Character section, which is Scenes. So this is when I actually create backgrounds with Midjourney and then use a free tool like Canva in order to upload my character variations. So as you can see, this is a background I generated with Midjourney. I used a free tool, Canva, in order to upload one of my character variations. So if you take a good look at this character here, and then you go back to variations, as you can see, I used this running pose that I generated with Midjourney. So there's a four step process into generating the images you want. This is going to be great for books, web design, anything that you need consistent assets for. And now I'm going to run you through my Midjourney workflow using this Notion workspace. So how am I generating different images from Notion to Midjourney? And then I'm going to show you how I upload it back to Notion so I can organize my favorite images that I generate. So let's first say that I'm struggling to get any ideas for the type of prompt that I want to use. Well, then I might go down to this engineered AI art prompt section. Let's say I want a realistic portrait and I want it to be close up. What I can do is I can open that up and now I can copy this template prompt. So I'm going to hit Control C. Then I'm going to head over to Midjourney, type in slash imagine, and I'm going to paste in that template prompt. But as you can see, there's information that I need to fill out here. So I'm just going to go in order and I'm going to use my components database in order to find the components that need filled out. So first off, I need to look for a subject to use. So I'm going to head back up to here, open my components database, and now, since I'm in the gallery view, I can get a nice image of the subject I want to use. So I'm going to scroll down to subject. I'm going to open that up. Now I can look through these for inspiration. Maybe I want to use a monk for the subject within this image I'm trying to generate. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to head back over to Midjourney, and I'm going to paste it where the subject is. So portrait of a monk. And now I get to choose a preposition. How do I want this monk in relation to the background? For this one, I want the monk within a building or some sort of environment. So I'm just going to leave it at within. So portrait of a monk within, and now I have to search for a background and environment within my components database. So I'm going to go right back here. I'm going to close up my subjects. And now I'm going to open background and environment. Now I have all of these different background and environments to choose from. Maybe for this one, I think it would be fitting to have a serene monastery. So I'm going to open that up. I can see a nice little example image and I'm going to copy that, head back over to Midjourney once again and paste it in for background and environment. So portrait of a monk within serene monastery. And then I have my settings right here that help make this a very realistic prompt. Now I can type in some parameters of my choice. I'm going to keep it simple and just have it be an aspect ratio of 16 to 9. And that's all I'm going to put for parameters. Now I can send it off. Now, as you can see, since I used the preposition within, the monk is within the serene monastery and we have these nice hyper-realistic portraits generated. So I'm going to upscale number three. I think I like the look of number three the best. I really like how it has that shallow depth of field and you can see that this is some type of monastery or something along those lines. So as part of my workflow, let's say I really like the look of this image and I wanna save it to my gallery so I can reuse this prompt for future use. And so I know what prompt I used in order to generate this specific image. What I could do is I could first copy the prompt that got me this image. 
Then I can hit open link on this image, save image as, and now I can head back to my Notion homepage. Then I can hit the add to gallery button right here. And since I have my prompt copied to my clipboard, I can then paste it in where it says untitled. So now I have the prompt I used. And now in the body of the page, I can upload my picture that I got using this prompt. So I'm going to select this gray section where it says embed anything, hit upload, and now I can choose a file. And I'm going to select the monk file and hit open. And now after it loads in, it will populate into our homepage art gallery as shown. So if I click off into some empty space, it's now in the art gallery right on the home page. And I've found that this is just an awesome way to sort some of my favorite images that I use. It's just fun to look at for one. And for two, if I want to generate something complex like this, I can see all of the elements that went into generating this photo here. So this has been my mid journey in Notion workflow and how I go about generating AI art. I hope that this video has given you some ideas on how you can organize your art in the future. If you do want this template, I will leave a link in the top pinned comment and the description below so you can scroll down there and check it out. So when purchasing, you'll get access to the characters hub in order to create consistent characters and organize your projects. You'll also get access to the 625 plus design components as well as the engineered prompts, the homepage gallery, the backend gallery. So you will get it all. With that being said, if you like Midjourney and you enjoyed my AI art workflow, then be sure to drop a like and comment on this video, letting me know some things I should change or some things that you would recommend in order to help me improve. Subscribe if you enjoy content like this, and I will see you within the next video.